Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Get to Know Her show. I'm particularly excited about this one because I'm interviewing a dear friend of mine, Nancy McMillan, who you guys would know as the fabulous chair of the Bright Run, uh, which is a walk run for cancer in, Hamil in at the Dundas Conservation Area. Uh, why can't I speak? I'm nervous to talk to my friend Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> the Dundas Conservation Park. Uh, it's a wonderful run. Uh, the Jervinsky Cancer Center gets all of the donations um, from this walk run and it all goes to breast cancer research and treatment. And Nancy McMillan makes sure of that. So we're going to talk to Nancy all about her, how she got involved with Bright Run and all of her secrets. I'll get them out of her, I promise you. Here she comes. Nancy. I, hi, Monica. Hi, Nancy. I just promised everyone that I was going to get your deepest, darkest secrets out of you today. So I hope that's Good. not too much pressure. <laughs> and we'll both know. That's perfect. <laughs> so I want to start by introducing you to everybody. And I want to introduce you in the way I, I did my formal introduction before you came on. But I want to introduce you as my friend. And I want to go back in time to when we first met. Do you remember that day? I do. I was so <laughs> rude. <laughs> so I had um, just started raising money with my business. I thought, you know what? I want to give back to a, a great cause and I'm going to do some bracelets to help raise money for uh, the, it was, I think the breast assessment. No, no, no. It was, um, mm -hmm. On Brant Street, that, uh, what was it again? Um, it was like a center where women could go. Uh, oh, it was run uh, by Blair Lancaster Burlington back. Support wait. services or something? Yes, yeah. that's right, Burlington Support Services. So mm -hmm. I was raising money for them, and Joelle had kindly invited me to set up at her place and sell there. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, this woman in pink whips in and says, those bracelets where are those bracelets and I need like maybe 10 or 20 of them where, where mm -hmm. is the lady and that was yeah. you Nancy and I stormed right by you because I was <laughs> focused I wanted the bracelets I wanted to get in and out and I wasn't interested in you know chit-chatting with anybody I was on a mission so you sorry, sure again. were <laughs> oh no that was mm -hmm. fantastic and we became fast friends from there and, uh, and I learned a lot from you. I learned a lot from you about giving back and fundraising, which we're going to get into. But um, as the years went on, you came to all of my events, which I'm so grateful for. You have quite a collection of glam jewels. I understand your husband uh, has had to, does he had to build you a second ladder now to uh, display all your jewels so you can pick the perfect um, necklace yeah. every morning? Yeah. It's in the works. Mm -hmm. in the works and um yeah. and then nancy one thing that will forever be close to my heart is when uh, i i called you to tell you the devastating news that my dad uh was <laughs> sorry nancy that's the freeze up that we get sometimes oh so that must have been my dad saying you better start by talking about me i think that's probably a sign from him so and i call <laughs> i called you with that news and you very gingerly walked me through how much do you know right now and i said uh there are spots on an ultra uh, on a cat scan nancy and you said oh yeah so a little bug might have walked across the screen got screen gotcha gotcha and you you pretty much gave me the peace of mind to not react to anything until I had all the facts. And that really helped me through my anxiety and in, in, you know, watching my dear dad uh, die from cancer. And you were there for my dad and we had to come to Juravinsky at one point and, and you were there, you greeted us, you popped him in a wheelchair. The two of you joked all day. I don't even think he caught on to what was going on or, <laughs> or what was ahead for him. He just talked about you all the time after that and 
what a joy that was. So thank you. And, and I thought it was important to share that because that is truly the essence of who you are, Nancy. And that's what you give to this world. And we're all so grateful for you. Thank you, Monica. <laughs> You're I welcome. do what I can. You know that. I do what I can. Yeah, well, you do a lot. So my first question to you, Nancy, is was this always in your bones since you were a little girl? I know there's a story about you with a hot dog and pizza day. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Uh, um, well, I think my parents, um, my mom wanted me to be a nurse, uh, as she had been. And uh, I during high school, High school, off I went to be a candy striper in the really cool pink and white outfits. Oh, um, nice. I, I quickly got assigned to the cafeteria <clears throat> um, because apparently nursing was not in my future. Um, then I thought, well, okay, my dad had gone to uh, the Ivy School of Business at Western for a short stint, and that looked pretty cool, so maybe I'd do that. So that's what I did. I went off to, um, to Western. But... From the time I was in probably uh, Canyon Heights Elementary School in North Vancouver, I was selling hot dogs and peanut slice, uh, peanut pizza slices um, <laughs> during those you know fundraising days when we needed equipment. So I would have been maybe <clears throat> eight, um, and from that age all the way through to sixty-one, um, I've been fundraising and having a blast doing it. Um, it just, it's so much fun. You can be so creative. And yeah, um, yeah in the blood, yeah. I yeah, so. in the blood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Nancy, you were, uh, you were working in the banking industry for 33 years, correct? Correct, yes. Yes, and then yeah. you had your own, you had a breast cancer diagnosis. Yeah, so I was um, I was a career banker with Scotia Bank, um, thirty three years, and there was an opportunity uh, at about year thirty one to take a bit of a break and um, sort of do a reset, as we're doing now. I think a lot of people are doing now with COVID. So I did a bit of a reset um, when I was diagnosed with breast cancer. So I took a, a year and a half hiatus from banking, um, did the breast cancer thing went back to banking and decided, you know, the, the fundraising thing, mm, maybe that was where I needed to be. So I was fortunate enough and I retired after 33 years with the bank. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So Nancy, when you were going through your own journey with breast cancer, mm -hmm. were is that, I mean, I guess that's where you found out about JCC and what they were doing there. Um, were you already involved with them in a fundraising capacity, like towards no. the end of your journey? No. Okay. No. no, so, no. Um, so I was diagnosed in um, 2007 and mm. the first bright run happened in 2008. Oh, so, wow. yeah. So I kind of, um, I got involved as just as things were, were coming together and they were putting together the first bright run. Um, I signed up cause I saw a poster uh, at JCC on one of my visits to see my medical oncologist and thought, okay, I can do this. Yeah. So I did. That's great. So you started mm -hmm. as a participant. Yeah. I was a okay. participant for the first um, three years, I think. Okay. And then in year four, um, I had done a little bit of fundraising. So they thought maybe I should be joining uh, um, their marketing um, group. So I came on as a volunteer. And mm -hmm. um, then mm, I sort of morphed into an assistant to the current chair at the time. And okay, okay now here we are. <laughs> now you're the chair. You wear the big boots. I am. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. so great. So, so tell, tell the folks, uh, I'm always amazed at this number. Every year, you guys raise about how much money? Mm. Um, 275 to $425,000. Yeah, unbelievable. So since Bright has started, mm -hmm. the Jerinsky Cancer Center, 4.2 million. 
Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So yeah. I also love because um, I'm happy to talk to you about this as well, because I think a lot of times um, when people are, uh, you know, looking to donate money or, or looking to support a cause they believe in, the question is always, where does the money go? How do I know it's going to towards the cause? So w let's uh, walk the people through the Nancy McMillan process of making damn sure it's going where it's supposed to go. <laughs> well, <laughs> actually, Monica, that, that's one of my very favorite questions. Where does the money go? Mm -hmm. um, it goes absolutely nowhere. So if yeah. folks are fundraising in, um, in Niagara or they're fundraising in Brantford or Hamilton or Burlington, um, the money goes to the regional cancer center that supports them and their family and their friends. So it goes or stays at the Jervinsky Cancer Center and McMaster University, which is where the research is being done. And when I say the money, that is every single solitary cent of participant raised dollars goes to support breast cancer research. And that's a commitment um, I personally made when I came on board with the Bright Run, because being a fundraiser back to those um, hot dog pizza days, I know how hard it is to fundraise, and it's it's um, asking folks to to um, for money is not mm -hmm. the easiest thing in the world, and it's not up everybody's alley. And uh, the way I normally turn it is, I'm providing people with an opportunity to support me, and what yes. I happen to be doing is fundraising. So um, yeah, so that's where the money goes. It doesn't have a long walk. It doesn't have to go down the highway. It doesn't have mm -hmm. to go across the country. Um, it yeah. basically just goes into the Jervinsky Cancer Center and McMaster. Wow, that's fantastic. And, uh, you know, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about today, Nancy, COVID is such a big thing right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's at the forefront of everybody's mind. And you and I had a discussion about this um, well, since it's happened, I've been on and off with you. What's going to ha be happening with Bright Run in 2020? And your fast answer to me was just because there's this thing called COVID doesn't mean that breast cancer is going away and we need to, you know, mm -hmm. work even harder to make sure that um, that these patients are being cared for and that that we're not taking our eye off the prize here. So... So what are you doing this year? Um, well, just to, to uh, reference the COVID thing. So with COVID, one of the things that they're really working hard on is to um, doing the research to find a vaccine, doing the research to find out, um, you know, how we find out about antibodies. And research takes a long time. And research mm -hmm. takes a lot of money. So if anything, COVID has given... Um, folks, uh, another little insight into the research world and things don't turn on a dime. Um, good, good and great things do take time. So with research, um, it's, you know, it's the same kind of deal. And when COVID reared its ugly head, um, we very quickly rallied the troops, um, albeit we do meet monthly, um, 12 months of the year, as far as Bright Run is concerned. But one of our first meetings um, early on in April was uh, as you said, a bright run is not going to yield to COVID. So yeah. um, why should the bright run? A breast cancer doesn't take a year off. Um, you know, as we were planning, there were still uh, women and men walking into JCC on a daily basis, finding out that they were leaving with a diagnosis of breast cancer. So we decided, all right, we're not going to have an event because we want to protect the safety of our patients and of our volunteers on our exhibitors will go virtual. This is before any of us knew what virtual meant. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the old dogs on the Bright Run Executive, we are learning new tricks as each day goes by. We are doing a virtual event on September the 12th, which will be as it has always been a celebration of our uh, two, three months worth of heavy lifting, which is our registration and our fundraising. And, um, yeah, we're going virtual. By then I'll know what it means. Oh, that's great. So if if somebody wants to join, I mean, 
one of the great things I, I wanted to put it out there too. Glam Jewels has a team. Every year we have a team. So if anybody wants to join our team, we would love that. Uh, Nancy also has a team. You yes, could join yes. Nancy's team. Mm -hmm. What's the, your team name again? Tell the folks. Uh, McMillan's <laughs> Madcaps. Yes. Mm -hmm. but, you know, it's okay, Monica. We can share. Okay, we can share. And you know what? I think I have a Madcap in the back here. I should have put it on. Oh, yeah. Um, Those are collector's items. Mm -hmm. They are collector's items. <laughs> So Nancy, uh, her caps are awesome. It's a cap with a bra on top. And I have a beautiful pink and black polka dot bra on mine. Because I joined your team the first time I did it. And then I, um, so I got the honorary cap. And then I ended up developing my own team. Nancy, we do have a question from uh, somebody here. She's asking, how do you pay to put the event on? Thank you for asking. Um, we are very, very fortunate. We have um, a group of uh, corporate sponsors, community partners, we call them. And they a lot of them have been, been with us for the 12 years. So it's through the support of our community partners and our sponsors that pay for all of the organizing and hosting costs for the Bright Run. So none of our participant raised dollars go to anything having to do with um, putting the event on, as it will because um, that's just not right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's uh, a great question. Yeah. 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 So, great. And if we don't have the money from the corporate sponsors, we don't spend it. So uh, there's mm -hmm. no such thing as overdraft in uh, bright run land. If you got the yeah. money, you spend it. If you don't, you wait. Yeah, perfect. Oh, that's good. Does that answer that one? Sorry, everybody, a little freeze up again. Um, so Nancy, you and I have something shaken. Oh, we do. We do. We've got something. Uh, oh, okay. So our friend Lee, or, who asked the question before, has another question for us. We'll well, answer Lee's. <laughs> that was for you, Lee. <laughs> oh. Can you tell Lee and Nancy are buds? Uh, okay. who are the, she wants to know who the sponsors are this year. Okay, so um, our presenting sponsor this, this year, as well as from last year, is LIUNA, which is the Laborers International Union of North America, and that's uh, under the leadership at the moment of Joe Mancinelli and his wonderful daughter, Victoria. Um, our other sponsor, who has been with us since day one, is uh, TD Wealth, and that's the uh, Paul Bresnahan Group out of Hamilton. And then we also have Exact Science, which was formerly known as Genomic Health. Um, and that is uh, Roy Richardson and Ashwini Bashan. And they've been with us for a very long time as well. Um, we have Pfizer, drug company. Uh, we've had Boehringer Ingelheim, drug company for many years. Um, oh, companies like Eastgate Ford, um, Mastectomy Lingerie and more, Chard on James Street North, Mm, who am I going to forget? I'm going to forget some, but I'll blurt them out when I remember was, them again. Was Mercedes also involved? Mercedes Benz Mercedes, of Burlington yeah. was involved for a number of years. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. That's so great. those are Lee's, the people that uh, pay the freight. Love it. Good. I think Lee's happy. We just got a ha ha from her. <laughs> That's important to keep Lee happy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we got to keep Lee happy. Oh, yeah. So, um, Lee is actually one of your amazing volunteers. I'm going to be seeing Lee soon um, because we've got something shaken, which I'm so excited about. And uh, Nancy has very kindly um, asked me for, I think we're on to year eight, seven, eight, something Let like that. Uh, one, oh, yes. Two, Nancy's counting. Three, four, five, six seven yeah this is eight. Oh my god i got it wow okay so all of those bracelets on nancy's wrist that you can hear her jingle jangling over there those are all of the team captain bracelets glam jewels has designed so nancy came up with this brilliant idea that when you form a team on the bright run you automatically get a team captain bracelet and um 
it's in recognition for all of your your efforts. So tell the folks how you've been uh, using those bracelets, Nancy. It's awesome. Um, okay, so here's a visual. So you yeah. get a starter kit in the past years. So you've got a bracelet and then as you reach certain fundraising uh, levels with your team, you are, um, you earn, you're not awarded, you work hard for these things. Um, mm -hmm. You are awarded different charms and some of them are, are Swarovski uh, crystals. Some of them are actual um, charm charms of running shoes or things. Other ones are, you know, just really pretty different gems. Um, and as you go through the fundraising, uh, you're awarded these to say thank you and keep up the good work. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's how we've done it each year. And there's a, a different bracelet if you are a survivor captain uh, versus if you are a community member captain. So, you know, there's yeah. a little bit of recognition for the school of hard knocks, if you will, uh, in getting the survivor status. Yeah, yeah, it's wonderful. We love doing it every year. So much fun. So uh, now, speaking of bracelets, we got another thing shaken. We wanted to let everybody listening today and whenever you tune in to know that uh, Nancy and I have organized a party. Ooh. And oh. it's a Zoom party. And it's like you got to wear pink, you got to drink pink, whatever pink you can have. The I'm glad problem. you're cool over Ever there and you're freezing over there because I'm roasting over here. You know what? I, I'm faking it. So I have right now, just to let you know, I don't have any AC. So my AC broke last year, but I'm thinking, you know what? I don't mind. AC actually irritates my allergies. So I thought I'll just wait till, you know, I really need it because for now customers are not coming here and it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the fan's not on right now, so I'm sitting very still, if you've noticed. Ah. <laughs> and I have my water. <laughs> but it's okay. No hot flashes, so that's good. Okay. You relax me, Nancy. I'm good. So yeah. um, so anyways, on July the 22nd at 7 o'clock, we're going to have this fabulous virtual party. And what it is, it's an opportunity for all of us to get together. Sam Jules is selling for Bright Run. Um, we're selling these for the Bright Run to raise money. And they're not finished bracelets, they're kits. So you have to string those beads and make it yourself. So Yikes. as Nancy said, I'm going to help you to embrace your inner jewelry designer the night of. So you can ask me any questions. We have an event uh, up on Facebook now, the Bright Run and Glam Jewels are hosting. So we'd love you guys to join us. It's gonna be great, Nancy, I'm excited about it. Well, you know what I've done, Monica, is I'm inviting my, um, my one, two, three granddaughters and my two daughters-in-law. So, uh, because they've always been, you know, involved in whatever Grandma Nancy was doing. So I thought, well, they might as well embrace their inner jewelry designer as well. So uh, you'll have two 10-year-olds and a nine-year-old. Um, and you know what? They're probably going to outdo me, but they're looking forward to joining the party too. Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. That's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking for, I can already, I'm already picturing that Zoom call with pink everywhere. Mm -hmm. Everybody in their pink. Yeah. Because that's what Bright Run looks like. I love it. And there's a doctor. Uh, oh, there's the kit. Yeah, that's what the kit comes in. Um, are you going to show the little beads inside now? So no, there's no. It's uh, just, it's scary when you open it. You just you know. yeah. <laughs> we don't want that. So uh, Dr. Mark Levine, I'm one. That's the thing I'm going to miss the most about Bright Run is seeing him in his outfit. Well, don't worry because part of the um, <laughs> celebration event on the twelfth. Um, yeah. we'll be live and we'll be doing it at um, a studio in Hamilton. And okay. I'm quite certain that now that you've mentioned it and by popular demand, um, 
Mark will be there in his famous pink tights. So don't worry, you won't be disappointed. All of the elements that you're used to seeing, Monica, at the, the celebration on Bright Run Saturday, um, you will see on oh, Bright Run Saturday this year. Yeah. And maybe Nothing you could pass on, the, if you could pass oh, on this message to him. Yeah, sure. go ahead. The only thing that will be missing yeah. is going to be, no, none of us will have bad hair because it won't be raining wherever we are. Right. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. The annual rainfall of the bright mm -hmm. run. That's correct. <laughs> so if you could ask Dr. Mark Levine one question for me, because he wears the sure. pink tights and because mm -hmm. we're not going to be in this park setting, maybe mm -hmm. he could rig up a stage setting wherever he is and do the David Lee Roth, like, you know, off the trapeze thing in his tights. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As my dad would say, I'll take that under advisement. Uh-huh. And we'll get back to you on that. Okay. <laughs> we'll just put that over there. That's for my right only now. request. Yeah. Okay. Yikes. He okay. might even have a ponytail by then. Oh, gosh. Hey, mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. might be really like. <laughs> Anything's possible. Anything is possible. So, Nancy, I also wondered if you could uh, share with the folks some information about breast cancer and about support. Mm -hmm. um, for anyone who's been newly diagnosed and is kind of like, oh my gosh, where do I go? What do I do? Um, what can they do right now during COVID, especially because I know you're, you know, whenever I don't know where you are, I know you're at JCC and you're walking the halls going, hi, are you new? I haven't seen you here before. Can I help you? Is there anything you need? How can, you know, what can we do to make your day better? And I would imagine right now it's not really like that over at uh, the foundation. So um, maybe you can sort of give your advice on to people on how to handle this right now and um, I think where to for, go for support. Okay. For anybody that is newly diagnosed or anybody who's going through um, a breast cancer diagnosis, I would suggest you focus on going through because you, you're not in a destination. You're, you're going through this particular journey. So focus on that. Um, listen to what your medical professionals are telling you. Um, and just a reminder that Dr. Google is not on your medical professional team. That is the purpose of, of um, making a list of questions and taking them with you when you go to your medical appointments. Get a book, a piece of advice I give everybody, right out of the gate, get yourself a really cool book that you're gonna want to write things in. Um, not some old tacky thing that's at the bottom of the closet. Get something really cool, get a really nice pen that you like and keep looking until you find one. Um, take Make notes as you think of things. And then show up at your appointments well prepared. I used to go and see my medical oncologist. And I think on one occasion, I didn't have um, a piece of paper with notes. And he said to me, OK, what's wrong? There must be something wrong. You, you didn't come with your notes. And sure enough, he was right. Uh, I was a little out of sorts. Um, so make notes. Uh, medical professionals. Um, Keep an eye out for new people who are going to cross your path during this little adventure, as I call it. Um, you will be really surprised at the people that um, are going to come into your life or people that are in your life now who are really going to step up. And uh, when they offer to do something, say yes. Assume the best because we always say, oh, well, I don't want to bother you or, you know, they're too busy already. Um, go on the assumption that if they've said to you, what can I do to ha uh, help, that they mean it. Um, having said that, I would recommend you have a list ready so that you're giving them something. Because remember, we all need to be needed. We all need to be valued. So think of things that um, you know folks could do for you. It doesn't have to be um, painting the back fence, okay? Um, it could be something as simple as, you know, pop by the library. I've put a couple of books on hold. I'd really like those. Okay, put that on the list. Um, another real biggie is find a friend with good penmanship to take to your appointments because they're going to be the other set of ears. 
and they're going to write down things that you're going to forget after you sit down in the chair and ask the first question. And these are going to be folks, they're not necessarily there to chat with your medical team. They are there to take notes. They're not there to comment. They're there to perhaps ask a clarifying question. If they know you so well that, that by the look on your face, they know that you didn't catch that. Um, they're going to be the ones to say, can I just, can you just run that by me again? And then they're going to take the notes that you're going to be able to look at um, when you get home and, you know, when you feel like it. Um, those are probably the biggies. Uh, the only other one is um, don't be disappointed. Don't take it personally. Don't be upset if one of your tried and true friends seems to vanish during this process. Mm -hmm. um, breast cancer and cancer in general, an illness is not for everybody. And sometimes the best way people are able to support you is to get out of your way. And that's okay. That's okay. Um, so those are probably some of the biggies if you're, if you're faced with this particular um, challenge. So that would be some of the things I would suggest. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really good advice, Nancy, because I think that happens, it happens more than we know. And um, oh, yeah, 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 it is. It's hard. Because uh, you just yeah, don't know. That's, that's right. And, and, you know, it's, it's interesting how, um, you know, my friends who have been through it, a lot of them have said to me, the new friends I have made are angels and and the and i've even had a couple of friends say to me i know you want to be here for me but right now i need friends who've been through this and i'm mm -hmm. so that's so fine with me mm -hmm. and it's so fine in our friendship and um <laughs> you got sure. Man central. <laughs> yeah you that much it. yourself i'll be right back <laughs> That's okay. Um, yeah, but I was going to say to you guys, I had a couple of friends who said that to me, you know, they just, they, they needed to uh, go through, through this part with someone who had already had the experience. And, and knowing that too, Nancy, I had one friend say it to me. And then I had another friend who was diagnosed who said it to me. And these two friends didn't know each other. And I said, hey, do you want to talk to someone who I love, who you would love? And and so bringing those women together, they're fa they became fast friends. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, we all have, there's a different path for everybody, right? So that's exactly. really good advice. Exactly. Yeah, we can't take anything personally. No. It's a waste of energy. No. no. Having said that, breast cancer is a very personal thing. So obviously you're going to take it personally. Um, mm -hmm. but you know, yeah. the reaction of other people, we cannot control. We can only re control how we react to things. And sometimes yeah. that's a bit of a challenge. So, yeah. And I do love your idea about, uh, making lists, um, lists and being prepared for people when they ask what, how they can help, because mm -hmm. I think a lot of, and I feel like I bring this up on, on all of my interviews on this show, but I think it's, um, something with women where we already have a problem asking for help we already mm -hmm. take on everything ourselves and self-care is often the very last thing on the list we might you know have a bath if we're lucky at the end of the day once we've taken care of everybody else but this this whole notion of self-care we're not invincible we do have to take care of ourselves which my yeah. dear friend nancy tells me often slow down Monica mm. take care of yourself it's not a race and sometimes yeah. doing that Monica you're helping your friend take care of themselves you're helping them cope with the, what they are um, what they're witnessing and uh, another reference I'd like to make is when you are um, when I was going through breast cancer I was the player on the field the coach would send me in, tell me what passes uh, and to make, what plays to make, you know, um, what I was going to do, and I just did what I was told. So it was easy mm -hmm. for me. I didn't really have to give a lot of thought to it. I knew exactly how many appointments I had, when they were going to be, where I needed to be, what I needed to do to prepare, what I needed to do to recoup, 
it was the people in the stands. It was the spectators uh. that were at a loss. They didn't know, do I cheer now? Um, you know, should I be concentrating now? What do I need to do? So by engaging your friends and your family and these new friends and people that are come out, coming out of the woodwork, you're actually helping them cope mm. with what you're going through because they are contributing. And we all know how great we feel when we have done something to help somebody else. So it's a kind of a, it, it's a full circle. You're helping them mm. cope with what you're going through and in turn, they're better able to support you. Yeah. Wow. Were, Nancy, were you um, like uh, on the self care part of it? Mm -hmm. Were you that way before your diagnosis? Or what, what were you like before your cancer diagnosis? Like, were you a workaholic? Were you, did you have good balance in your life? Um, is, okay. is learning how to take care of yourself something you learned because of breast cancer? Or did you already know? I think the self-care, okay, so like I don't run, I don't yeah. walk, I don't eat properly, I don't get a lot of sleep. So self-care is sort of a, an interesting enigma for me uh, then mm -hmm. and now. But probably the biggest thing I learned, thanks to breast cancer, and there were a lot of things, was when something is crossing your radar screen, so something pops into your mind, or something is weighing heavily on your heart, for goodness sake, stop. Listen to what it is that is crossing the radar screen that's coming into your mind. And if it's something that you um, can take action on now, for goodness sakes, get off your butt and go and do it. Whatever doing it happens to be. Um, you know, we hear a lot of people, particularly leading up to retirement, well, I'm going to wait and when I, get, when I retire, I'm going to go on the big trip or when I retire, I'm going to take knitting, or when I retire, I'm going to read a good book. Um, you know what? From breast cancer, I learned do it right now because God willing, a chance to do it again and again and again afterwards. Don't wait to do anything. And that's probably my biggest tip on self care. Mm. And it could be as stupid as, gee, I really should stop and get gas now on my way home. Oh, I can't be bothered. I'll do it in the morning. Mm -hmm. Well, Doing it now it was, was one more thing that I could say, okay, I've done that. And it sounds stupid, but it would be on my to-do list from the time I thought of it to the time I actually did it. And I've got far more important things to think about than that kind of nonsense. So. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's great. Yep. I hear you, girl. I My gas light's on right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. I knew yeah, that. You're, you're right, though. And it is. It's a win, right? It's like, yeah, yeah, which is good. Makes you feel good. And they don't all have to be home runs. You know? Nope. Little nope. Things. Exactly. That's great. So, Nancy, I am so grateful for all your time today. Is there anything that we didn't cover that you were dying to, to get out um, there? I really, your advice to people, so so valuable so I've got one piece of advice i think for folks who are um folks who have a friend or a family member or, or someone who is going through not necessarily a cancer diagnosis but anything that they're going through in their life that's pretty tough what's the first thing we do when we call somebody we say hey how are you <laughs> don't ask <laughs> i said to my um stepsons when i was first diagnosed I said, so when you call to check in on me, the first thing I want you want to hear from you is, um, so, so what's up with dad? How are things? What are you guys doing? Um, don't ask me how I am, because that gets old really quickly. Um, I've got a life outside of my medical condition or my medical situation. Ask me about that. Ask yeah. me about about what else is going on um, ask them about what else is going on in their world if you know if they're an avid sports fan or if they love to read or something so what book are you reading now and I mm. know Monica you could probably hear me saying that well before the so how are you oh yeah yeah so that yeah. would be the only other thing I would add oh that's so great yeah I love that oh and very did I true 
we want people to register for the Bright Run. That would be oh, really yeah. Nice. Yeah, we need that. And we're actually, when I post the video, I'm going to leave the details uh, for it. I'll leave the registration link so people can go ahead and just click and do that. And um, I wanted to say one thing about, about this notion of um, phoning somebody up and not asking, how are you? when mm. it, it's an illness so there's a book nancy i don't know if you ever read it it's called feel the fear and do it anyway no and anyway it's a very interesting book but one part of the book that really stuck out to me was if there is something in your life that is that you're you have you're fearful about mm -hmm. keep an eye on it and imagine it i think it stuck with me because they compared it to a diamond there's several facets on a diamond and you should never let one thing in your life take over more than one facet each thing is allowed one facet and that's it mm -hmm. and once that starts spreading to other facets that's when all sorts of things can arise with mental health issues and all these kinds of things anxiety mm -hmm. depression and you're absolutely right because that question that seems so innocent, how are you, is bringing that thing back to that person mm -hmm. that they mm -hmm. don't want to have it overtake their life. You're right. They they are more than just their illness. They, they've got a whole life. They've got dreams. They've got interests. They've got plans for their future. Like there's so much more to talk about. And often and people lie. They don't tell you the truth anyway. Yeah, Fine. they don't. Yeah, and it's kind of nice how um, when you approach it that way, at the end of the conversation, that person's going to tell you if, you know, there's something that's really bugging them and they're not well and they got a vent and let it out. That's something different. They're controlling it, right? But we're not you're not putting them in a position where, oh, God, now I got to tell them about how I'm feeling. What the hell? Yeah. So yeah, that's really good advice. Love it. Oh, I'm so happy to have you as a friend. I hope everyone here realizes that I get to call this lady whenever I want and spill my <laughs> guts. And she goes, Monica, I call Nancy Coach Nancy. Mm. Well, that's as close <laughs> as I'm going to get to a sports um, uh, affiliation. So thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> I love it. Well, we love you, Nancy, and uh, my family loves you. You're just such an amazing person, and you're one of my new friends who feels like I've never had a life without you, so thank you for everything you do. And right back at you, Monica. We appreciate everything you do for the Bright Run, and I'm really lucky to call you a friend as well. Aw. So we're going to have an Instagram after party, Miss uh, Techno over here. Yeah, okay, Nancy's okay. like streamyarding, Instagramming. So everybody mm -hmm. who's watching, please join us uh, on Instagram. <laughs> um, so, okay. Yes, I'm answering another question here. Belinda is asking if I can uh, post a, about the book, Feel the Fear and Do It. Feel the Fear and Do It anyway. Yes, no problem. It's a great book. Nancy, thank you. Love you. See you on Instagram. Thanks, Monica. I'll let you go have a drink of water now. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you for listening and watching. Oh, thanks so much, you guys. That was a lot of fun. Nancy is so wonderful, and uh, I'm sure you got all of her positive vibrations through this video. Uh, if you do happen to be watching this video on YouTube and you liked it, I would love for you to subscribe to the channel. We're recording all these videos live for now during COVID, uh, but who knows where the future will take us. So just want to keep uh, bringing you some good content with uh, some pretty amazing, powerful women. And uh, thank you for being here. I appreciate Appreciate you so much and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye for now.